Welcome to One Church. The Ripon campus is just one of many campuses throughout the Central Valley. And as you're watching today, make sure you comment below. We want to hear how your week was. And if this is your first time with us, make sure you click the simple connect card below. We just want to follow up and say hi, and we've got a special gift for you. We also want to pray for you this week. Make sure you head over to visit onechurch.com slash prayer, or comment below your prayer request, and we can pray for you right then and there. And hey, we hope all the mothers last week had a phenomenal Mother's Day, and we had a phenomenal Mother's Day service. And if you didn't get a chance to check that out, find it on our YouTube and our Facebook pages. All of our female campus pastors got together with just a powerful message. And in other news, if you haven't heard, I guess there's a lot of critical levels for blood in our area. And so one church is actually privileged to team up with the Red Cross, where we are going to be able to host these different sites to be able to give blood and team up with them. And so use this as an opportunity as a community outreach. Use this as an opportunity to show people the hands and feet of Jesus. And so make sure to check out the description below on how you can get involved and donate blood. And then what you've all been waiting for, we're about to announce the winner of the Mother's Day board, uh, cheese board and gift set giveaway. So are you guys ready for it? Here it is. We're going to take just a few minutes for our tithe and our kingdom builder offering uh, during our online service and uh, again we just believe that if we do our finances God's way then we will always fall under his umbrella of provision for us and that's honestly exactly where I want to find myself and my family and so we, ha we have four ways that you can give and they're going to be listed right here you can see the four ways to give and uh, we are, we're specific to give you this time during uh, these online services uh, just to serve as a reminder to help you get uh, not out of practice just to kind of stay in practice with your tithing and with your kingdom builders offering and uh, I would also just like to say thank you to you to your faithfulness in giving um, to the ministries of our church and to the missionaries of our church even during a crazy season like this our church is still able to move the gospel forward we're still able to reach around the world through kingdom builders and bring the gospel to every broken life under the sun and so thank you for your faithfulness and your giving we love you god bless you
So glad you tuned in with us today. We are continuing our series called The Quarantine Life. And man, this has just been a time like no other. And so let's let's take a moment to take another peek to describe this quarantine life. Yeah, we know how you're feeling. Sitting by the window with fake rain on it. But it looks like real rain. Every trip she made, every time she paid, every picture frame, every mouth guard game, she's missing you. Every time you went, every candle sent. Mommy's looking out the window sad Thinking of all the good times she had Two o'clock she went through the door Blacked out and it was suddenly four She felt like she had just been freed Buying fake plants that she doesn't need Getting new leggings to go for a jog Decorative pillows for our dog Now you were worrying the day away Wondering if Chip and Joe were okay Or what they have on that dollar aisle Maybe a miniature garden sundial Target is open but you resist even with all of those sales you missed Wish you could stop for something fun When you miss every those target runs Every single trip Every Starbucks sip Every accent lamp Every filing clamp She'll be missing you Check it out I know right now she's out of her mind Cause right now there would be a short, short line And right now the parking would be easy to find And right now there's a sale on some window blinds Her whole house smells like B.O. But she knows that she shouldn't go Smell candles for an hour or so She likes coconut and mango Till COVID-19's no more She can't go back into the store And get those accent rugs for her floor Or any other kind of home decor When this is done I have a fear My bank account might never Never clear, we probably won't see her for days Once she can go back to Target's Every trip she made, every time she paid Every picture frame, every mouth guard game Every time you went, every candle sent Every friend you met, every bed she set Yeah All right, well, turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 4. Um, today, we are going to talk through how to be secure in an insecure world. I know this is a topic that we all struggle with, no matter who we are. We all wrestle with insecurities in our life, whether it's insecurities in our job or with certain relationships or in our finances. I think sometimes we feel insecure with God in our relationship with God, maybe insecure with how things are headed in our life or how things are going to unfold for our life. And we had feelings of insecurity before this whole quarantine time, but now recently, probably those feelings have compounded. And so I was just thinking about it this week, like what if we never had another insecurity from this point forward? Like, it would change everything for us. Like you, I don't want to live with insecurity. I want to live in security. Confident. I want to live assured. In fact, every insecurity in your life is a bondage that God wants to break. He doesn't want any of that for you. So this morning, we're going to take a look here in Acts chapter 4. Incredible story here unfolding. Um, here's what's happening. Peter and John, they're headed to the temple. And on their way, there is a crippled man 
who is sitting at the city gate and they heal him in the name of Jesus. So this man who hasn't been able to walk his entire life, he gets up, healed this miraculous move of God, and he starts praising God for it, thanking God for it. And of course, this begins to draw a big crowd. People are amazed at what just happened. And the Bible says that 2,000 people got saved that day. Well, the rulers, the elders, the Pharisees, they hear about the, the situation. They hear about this miracle. And because it's about Jesus, they have Peter and John thrown in jail. So pick me up here at verse 8, because now it's the next day. Um, they pull Peter and John out of jail to give an account for what happened. So here they are standing in front of all the leaders, all the elders, all the Pharisees. And verse 8 tells us this. It says, then Peter, here he is standing in front of the Sanhedrin, standing in the courts. It says, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, he says to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and we're being asked how he was healed, well then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus, he's the stone you builders rejected, has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Well, when they saw the courage of Peter and John, they realized that these were just unschooled, ordinary men. And they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. I mean, come on now. This is an incredible passage, and it really lays out a lot of stuff for us. Here's Peter and John, and they're standing before the rulers, like the most powerful people in their life. And Peter basically stands up and says, are you all for real? Like, are we seriously being held today because of an act of kindness? Because God has extended his kindness to us? I mean, you want to talk about having some security? I love how bold and secure these two disciples are. But don't forget, what is it like just a few chapters earlier, these two were some of the most insecure guys. John John was known as the son of thunder because he had such an anger problem. He would just erupt. You know, anger, anger is one of the primary ways people use to cover up their insecurities. We get angry when we feel out of control, right? We get angry when we feel exposed or, or vulnerable. We use anger to, to bully people and, and try to protect ourselves and manipulate others. Like John was insecure. And then Peter, Peter was no different. The reason Peter is always stepping out in every Bible story that we read about him is because he's always trying to prove himself. He's always trying to get out in front and be ahead and, and get the attention. And often it's the people that seem the most confident are the ones who are the most insecure. They're so vocal because they're always needing validation. They're always needing to prove something. So then fast forward, how now in Acts chapter 4 are they feeling so secure? How now are they now able to come with boldness and know who they are and whose they are and what's going on for Christ? Here's how. Because they started focusing their attention on Jesus' victories, and they stopped focusing on their own lacking. They start focusing on Jesus' authority, and they stopped focusing on their own inadequacies. I mean, even just look at this passage. Never once did they start talking about themselves. Never once did they bring up anything about themselves. They just talk about Jesus. They just talk about the victories that happen through Jesus. So these disciples, they are now secure with their past, knowing Jesus has forgiven it all. They're now secure in their present, knowing Jesus is with them. And they're secure in the future because of all Jesus has promised them. 
And that same security, it's offered to each one of us. See, salvation is the foundation of your security. You will never be secure in this world until you're first secure in Jesus. I found this definition for insecurity this week, and I liked it, so I'm going to share it with you this morning. You can define insecurity like this. Insecurity is just chronic self-consciousness, okay? It is just uh, this constant sense of having to evaluate yourself, of comparing yourself and comparing my situation with everything else. I should be more like this. I should look more like that. I should be able to have that. Insecurity is chronic self-consciousness. It's the constant evaluation and judgment of ourselves. Like we all struggle with that. We all, we all wrestle with feeling those kinds of ways. And chronic self-consciousness is what leads to insecurity. That's what we're talking about. It's this chronic self-consciousness. It's what leads to us always feeling insecure, which means then that our security is found in chronic Jesus consciousness. Our eyes fully on him, fully aware of who he is and what he's promised, the victories he has for us, and his loving nature that is going to take care of every one of our needs. If we are not pursuing security in Jesus, then we're pursuing security somewhere else because we all crave to feel secure. And the one thing that I love about this passage, not only are they boldly preaching the gospel, but they're really teaching us how to live secure. Look at verse 11 with me again. He says, Jesus, the stone you builders rejected, here it comes, has become the cornerstone. The stone that you builders rejected has become the cornerstone. He says, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. They say Jesus is the cornerstone. He's the foundation, the rock, the center point, the starting place of our lives. Colossians 1.17 says, In him all things hold together. In other words, Jesus holds our life together. He's the cornerstone. And the Bible goes on to say that we are like living stones being stacked and built together upon Jesus as the cornerstone. And when the cornerstone is right, the whole building holds together. And when the cornerstone is wrong, the whole thing falls apart. Jesus needs to be the cornerstone. In Matthew chapter 7, uh, Jesus tells a story about a wise man and a foolish man. In fact, if you, if you grew up in church when we were little, we used to sing this song, the wise man built his house upon the rock. Uh, it, it's a song about this parable that Jesus told about a wise man that built his house on the rock. And when the rains came and the winds blew and the streams rose, that house stood strong. It stood firm. It was secure because it was built on the rock. He says, but then there's a foolish man and the foolish man, well, he, he builds his house on the sand and The rains come and the winds blow and the streams rise. And at some point, that house falls with a great crash because it was built on shifting sand. And what Jesus is teaching us through this parable is that you're building your life on one of two things. Like right now, today, you are building your life on one of two things, either immovable rock or shifting sand. And there's no in-between. It's either one or the other. And if we are building our life on shifting sand, we never feel secure. Why? Because it's always shifting under our feet. We can feel it always moving, ever changing. And so we never have a sense of security. And at some point, a storm is going to come. We're in a big storm together right now. You may be in one personally too. And when those storms come, if our house has been built on shifting sand, the whole thing collapses. But if you build your house on the rock, now hear me, building our house on the rock, it does not make you immune. You're not immune from storms or heartache or trials. It just makes you secure. 
The storms hit both people, but when your cornerstone is Jesus, when he is your firm foundation, even through the storm, he holds it all together, and that's security. If you are a faithful follower of Jesus, under every insecurity you have is Jesus. Okay? Under, under every insecurity that you have in your life right now, every, every worry, every fear that you have, if you dig beneath that, Jesus is there, your firm foundation, your cornerstone. And sometimes we may need to dig a little bit deeper to remind ourselves who it is that we built our life on, right? In my own life. When, when I start feeling insecure about a certain relationship or, or what's happening in my life or, or something that I have to put my hand to and I just start circling this chronic self-consciousness, feeling uncertain, feeling insecure about something, I have to remind myself, Kim, you got to dig through the layers. Yes, there may be some sand that I have piled up on top of that rock, but when I push it all away and I get down to the bottom and I fix my feet back on the rock and I remind myself that my security isn't based on how I look or what I have or how I perform or my position or my assets or my politics, my security is based on the fact that I am standing on the name that is a above all names, the victor, the the cornerstone. And when my feet touch that foundation again, I am reminded that I have nothing to fear because my feet are firmly planted on the cornerstone. And that's where my security comes from. Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's what the Bible says. It's Christ in you. In fact, King David said in Psalm 139, He said, Lord, even when I go to the depths, you are there at the highest points and at the lowest points. Jesus is there. So spiritual maturity isn't that I never feel insecure anymore. Maturity is that I just get to the foundation faster. See, all insecurity is, is misplaced trust. Psalm 20 verse 7 says, some trust in chariots and some in horses but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Insecurity is just misplaced trust. It's trusting in someone else or something else for security in our lives. We're looking to something else to determine our value, something else to give us our significance or our identity or our provision. And the problem with that is what happens when the economy shifts? What happens when our money decreases? I mean, I turned 42 this last week. What happens when we don't look the same as we did when we were in our 20s, right? What happens when a coworker gets the promotion instead of us? If those things make us fall apart, we've put our trust in the wrong place. If those things make us lose hope, then we put our trust in the wrong place. There's a story in the Bible about the rich young ruler. And you know what it tells us? It tells us that he was insecure about money. Jesus challenged him to go sell everything he had and to give his treasure to the poor and to come follow him. And Jesus said, you will have so much more treasure if you do. And the man grabs it all and he backs up because he can't even part with a dollar. He trusted his money more than Jesus. Insecurity, it just comes from trusting in someone or something other than Jesus. And so my question for us today is, What are we trusting in? In the midst of all of this, what are you trusting in? And maybe for a lot of us, what we were trusting in has been removed, or at least it's been shaken, and it has left us feeling insecure in an insecure world. Remind yourself of this today. My security is not based on what I have. It is based on who I have. And his name is Jesus. He is the foundation of our security. If he is in the right place in our life, he will hold it all together. I want to just close with this last story from... Uh, Mark chapter 5. You want to turn there in your Bible. 
Um, Mark tells us about a woman who was sick and she had had a constant flow of blood for the last 12 years and she had done everything she knew to do to try to find healing. She'd spent all of her money. She has gone to doctors. I mean, she has tried it all. I mean, you want to talk about a person with an insecurity. Everywhere she goes, she has to cover herself. Everywhere she goes, she has to stay apart from everyone else. She is known as an unclean person. In the first century, anytime there was blood, you had to stay away. So everywhere she goes, she has to declare that she is unclean. If she touches someone, they become unclean. If she uses something and then someone else uses it, they become unclean. I mean, you talk about insecurity and uncertainty you talk about a sense of hopelessness and one day jesus comes to town and as he is going through a crowd develops and this woman has a thought if i could just get to jesus if i could just reach out and take hold of the hem of his garment i will be healed and she goes for it she, she enters into the crowd and she presses her way through and gets to Jesus and then she stretches out her arm as far as she can reach and she gets to Jesus and she grabs hold of the hem of his garment. And the, ba- the Bible says that power flowed from Jesus and she was instantly and miraculously healed. And Jesus stops and he says, hey, who just touched me? And the disciples are like, Ah, everybody's touching you. Are you kidding? There's a crowd. Everyone's pushing in. And he says, no, no, no. I felt power flow from my body, which means that it was her faith that released his power. Think about that. It was her faith that released his power. Jesus wasn't walking down the side of the road like, you're healed and you're healed and you're healed. No, she walks up to him and her faith reaching out and taking hold of him released his power, which means friends, your faith releases his power power. Your faith, it releases his power in your life. Jesus says, who touched me? And and the woman, you know, she is waiting for a rebuke. But Jesus looks at her and says, daughter, take heart. Your faith has healed you. Your faith has saved you, healed you, and made you whole. It is Jesus who makes us whole. It is salvation that makes us whole. Colossians 2.10 tells us you are complete in Christ, which means his victories are now your victories. His strength is now your strength. And if you are complete in him, that means you are no longer incomplete in yourself. And we say, oh gosh, but do I have what it takes? Am I enough? Can I work this out? Can I figure this out? And Jesus says, I have more than it takes. I am more than enough. And if you build your life with me, see that I won't throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much over your life. Salvation, it is so much more than just a ticket to heaven. It makes you a new creation. It forgives you. It empowers you with his spirit. It redeems you for a purpose. It takes you out of the kingdom of insecurity and the kingdom of darkness. And it brings you in to the kingdom of light. 2 Peter 1.3 says his divine power. It gives us everything we need for life and godliness. Insecure people become secure when they build their life on the secure one. You become whole. So today, I want to I want to say a word of prayer for us. No matter what storms have come your way during this season, no matter what you're walking through today, if you have insecurities or uncertainties or fears and anxiety that have built up throughout this season, let's say a word of prayer together today. Would you pray with me? Lord, for those of us who have been feeling really insecure about this time we're in, insecure about how this is all going to unfold, insecure about the future, maybe insecure 
Um, there's some insecurities about our marriage or insecurity about our provisions or about our government and all, how all this is going to land. God, for any of us who have built our life on the cornerstone, we know that that firm foundation, it's down there somewhere. And we've maybe just piled so much sand and worry up on it that we've forgotten what it feels like to put our feet on the solid rock so we can stand, so we can fear not. Lord, you want to set us free from fear today. And so, Father, in faith, just like the sick woman in Mark chapter 5, God, in faith, we reach out. And we take hold of you. There is power released into our life when we respond in faith to you. So this morning, we reach out to the one who will make us whole. Break off the shackles and the bondages that those insecurities have brought. They don't have any say over us anymore. Would you break those things off in the name of Jesus and set us free by the name that is above all names, the cornerstone of our lives, the God who died for us so that we can live free. God, release healing and wholeness over every person watching today. In Jesus' name, I pray. And you know, friends, I, I can't help but get a sense that when you preach a message like this, that some of you watching today would like to respond and say, you know, I haven't built my life on the rock of Jesus. Maybe I've gone to church. Maybe I grew up going to church. Maybe I... You know, I used to be a regular churchgoer. I don't know your story. Maybe you've never even set foot in a church. Maybe you don't know much about Jesus. But today, as you're feeling the insecurities, as you're knowing exactly the shifting sand I'm talking about today, you want to ask Jesus to be your cornerstone. You want to invite him into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Romans 10 says this, If you declare with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So this morning, if you wanna ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life or you wanna rededicate your life, would you just pray this prayer after me? Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and I believe you rose from the dead and I invite you to come into my life. Would you be my Lord and Savior? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We celebrate with you. If you made that decision, whether you've rededicated your life or today maybe you prayed that prayer for the first time, uh, we have some things we'd love to put into your hand. We want to we want to email you some things to help you get started in this new relationship with Jesus. Some great email tools that'll help you in this first new steps with Jesus. So would you just click on the link below, uh, visitonechurch.com slash new believers. And we want to just celebrate that with you. Again, if you were new watching with us, would you just click the connect card? We would love to know you were here and we have a special gift for you. God bless you this morning. Glad you joined us. watching with us this morning. If you're new with us, fill out the connect card in the comments below. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better. And if you just dedicated your life to Christ for the first time, we would love to celebrate with you and get some resources to help you along this journey. And don't forget to send in your prayer requests. We would love to pray with you. Have a great week. See you next Sunday.